you know, I think what's, what's very critical here, I mean, I'm talking to people who are probably um, aspiring and some of them are probably musicians. You know, one of the most important things is understand that uh, in our industry, <coughs> excuse me, we make money and how we make money and how we use money is very critical at a stage where we're very successful. Unfortunately, his history is littered with um, impoverished musicians who at some stage had been very successful. And today, they have nothing to show for what they have. And sadly, we, we always find other people to blame for you know, that situation. I've been privileged in a way that the people that I work with within the recording industry were, I must say, people who were willing to give advice. At the end of the day, I was surrounded by people that would say, look, when you make your royalties, ensure that you put them in the right space so that if you stop selling music, they are still, uh, you know, there's still a way in which you can you can survive. I mean, Pearl said, asked if there was anything that I've lost, fortunately, because I had made uh, maybe strategic investments and decisions on the money. I was able to keep some money, and that's how I managed to stay longer in the industry. We must also remember that education is very critical. Education is very, very important. However, the system of education at that time did not afford or accord African people the, the opportunity to study economics. You either had to become a doctor or a lawyer. And when you qualify as those people, you still have those challenges of having to employ a, an accountant, essentially most of them who had been white and at white universities and they were able to advise. And in a way, you'd be able to find people that are honest and sincere and advise the lawyers and the doctors how to. But in our industry, we never find such people unless you work with a record company that have people that have uh, the executive that has your interest at heart. I was privileged to have people such as those. I mean, there was Dennis Cusin, there was Peter Gallo, there was, I can name them. And in most cases, I would engage with them to say, listen, yeah, burnout is a hit, so what do we do, you know? I say, put the money where your mouth is. At some stage, I had stocks on the uh, Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and I didn't know what it was. But I had Dennis Cusin and says, now, page over. And, and that way, I was able to learn how to manage and, and of course, as I was growing up and developing, I had been privileged to have uh, a manager. Mm. It's very important that you guys find the right kind of management. What I know now, what I didn't know about money then, is important that I know today. And if I knew then what I know now about money, I probably would have been talking about being Sipo Mabuse, the billionaire, rather than uh, you know, the millionaire. The, no. <laughs> <laughs> Multi. Well, I don't want to talk about being the millionaire. Let's just say that the royalties are keeping me alive. <laughs>